This program is called Class Dojo, and it also has an app that you can have on your phone. Um, it originally I used it many years ago uh, for classroom management. Uh, you can award points to students for certain behaviors. Um, you can put them into groups if you have them in seating groups uh, for group behaviors as well, or you can assign assign points to the whole class. And then I would use those points for uh, special rewards. So when you click on a student or, um, or the whole class and you can uh, assign points, you can assign for positive things and you can edit these skills. So uh, you can choose, for example, what it's called. Um, uh, if they're on task, you can assign how many points you want to be on task and you can even change the icon. So these are all customized. You don't have to keep the, the, the names that are on there. Um, you can also take away points uh, for those that need work. So generally you don't want to be taking away points, that's just my opinion. But if you wanted to have off-task behaviors, um, then you could assign an icon for that. Um, if it was off-task, you might have the speech bubble because they're chatting or whatnot. And decide how many points you want to subtract. So um, that I use for many years. However, it's very time consuming to, to constantly click on something and award points when, the, when you're in the middle of teaching or um, circulating and helping others. So again, you can assign it to the, to the whole class. So I still use Class Dojo, but I don't use it for the point system. Generally, I use it for they've got great new features on here, such as um, if you go into this toolkit, which is new, you can have it make groups. So it's really easy to quickly uh, make groups. If you want to say, I want four students per group, it'll randomize that. If there's extras left over, then you can have those students uh, choose a group to go to or assign a group as well. If, you're, if you have an even class of 30, then obviously, uh, you know, choosing groups of, you know, five or would make it uh, an even number. Um, so group maker is a good one. Um, another one is if you want to pick a student for something um, to avoid, you know, students saying, oh, you always pick the same person or um, whatnot, you can have it randomly select somebody, um, you know, whether it's discussions or anything, sending somebody to the office or any errand, you can use that random generator. It's also great if you want to just set a quick timer in your class. So you can set a five minute timer, 10 minute, you can you know, add your own timer on how long you want it to be for an activity. Um, another great feature that I like is uh, the today, today in directions. So it saves what you've previously written. So often if somebody, you know, if I'm starting a class, then I will just display on the, on the board uh, or the projector what is the order of the day or what are the housekeeping things that we need to begin. You'll notice that when I use that feature for those really long ones, that it tends to run over. And so for the background, I've actually switched. I like using now the directions and I can put it in one at a time. So for example, um, if I click on June 5th here, so I can just put it in order what's gonna be happening. Uh, with the objective, what are my success criteria um, for the day. So directions is a good one. I display it on the board so when the kids come in, they see it right away. They read. They don't need to all ask, what are we doing today? What are we learning? So it just saves that, um, answering that question over and over. Think, Pair, Share is another good one. To, you can write in a question and have students discuss it. So what are you grateful for today if you want to start off your class? Uh, in the toolkit, another feature you can have is music. If the kids are working and you want them, if it's more of a focused work or an active, uh, engaged work, um, focus will, you know, be more of a calming sound. So you can uh, play the music for, for that as well, which I will often just leave running as background noise. Um, My volume is off, that's why I wasn't running. So that is the uh, focus sounds. Okay, there's no lyrics, it's just music, it's calming. Or you can go to the active sounds, be a little bit more upbeat.
So it saves you searching for songs. It saves you from having the kids constantly wanting to pick songs and then argue over who picked last. So it's just background noise. Another one is the noise meter. If you, um, I've used this one before as well if the class is getting too loud. So it has different, you can increase or decrease the sensitivity and you can try to get the kids to keep it um, from going in the red. So right now my sensitivity scale is quite high. If I decrease that, because uh, I'm just talking at a, you know, a normal level, then it will stay more in a lower green. However, if students start yelling and screaming and running around the classroom, then it's good, which they shouldn't be doing, then it will go up to the red so you can play with the sensitivity and try to get, and the kids are more aware when their volume gets louder. So those are, those are all great features in, in the new toolkit that's been added. Um, you could use it for attendance. I don't, uh, just because our, my district has an attendance uh, already that sends out notices to parents, so there's no need for that. Um, they also have big ideas, which is kind of good for younger grades. If you're looking to teach for mindfulness or something, um, they have these little, the little characters, the dojo characters that are used. Um, they have many videos that you can use and play. Uh, which I did when I was at the elementary level, and the kids really enjoyed the characters and the and the short videos. So um, you can check out various uh, activities. So there's growth mindset, perseverance, empathy, gratitude, and uh, there's a new one, mindfulness again. So in each one of those, um, there's there are several videos that you can choose one. They're fairly short videos. Um, but are great when um, you notice uh, something happening in the class that you might want to draw the direction to being mindful. Um, so, yeah, so those are some good ones. Um, also, going back to the class, they've added in, um, well, the class story's always, always been there. So it's similar to to see so I suppose in that um, effect except for you can't make individual folders for things so if you want to um, add something to the class story you can add a file a photo and post it to the class to again share with parents what you guys are learning there's also again that message piece back and forth that you can have with parents um, that's private again. So it's it's similar to Seesaw, however, I prefer Seesaw just for some of the added features of being able to have individual folders for classes and or for subjects. Uh, but this is great for, for some of those mini toolkits. So I use them in, in combinations. The kids can customize their monsters if they want. Generally, because I'm not using it uh, with them as a reward system anymore and just for the toolkit, they're you know, they're okay with the randomly generated monster. I haven't had a problem there. Uh, portfolios also shows it's new. Um, I haven't signed up for portfolios because, again, it's very similar to Seesaw, which um, I'm more likely to use. But you can decide which one works best for you. So another great program you can try out. Thanks for watching.